What is up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to the next episode of the Three Peaks Fitness Podcast. I'm Coach Mark. I'm Coach Lynette. And today we have a very special guest, <laughs> Mr. Nate Lundstrom. Yes. The man, the myth, the legend. Yes. How's it going, Nate? Good, good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, we appreciate you coming on to the podcast. We always like to open up these client interviews. Just give us the 90-second rundown of you know who you are, what you do, all that good stuff. Who is Nate in 90 seconds? Um... I am a uh, software engineer, so I spend a lot of time behind a desk, not moving around very much. So, uh, you know, finding time for fitness and uh, was uh, kind of important because I was getting older and things were starting to hurt and not feel good. And so uh, needed to need to get out. Plus, uh, I got my son and uh, he's uh, extremely energetic and I was uh, very quickly unable to keep up with him. So I needed to uh, figure out a way to, um, you know, St- catch up yeah yeah and you have definitely caught up uh yeah <laughs> big time yeah you've definitely made some serious progress man over the i guess how long We're how at- long would you say your, this fitness journey has been going on for because you know let everyone know what sort of transformation you've made number one and then number two you know what it's kind of what it's kind of looked like in a nutshell i think seriously it's been about 13 months um on and off it, it, like there's a lot of starts and stops, but this has been like a 13 month haven't stopped mm-hmm. thing. And, you know, we've gone from having to buy new clothes in a good way as opposed to a bad way, <laughs> uh, running 5Ks, 10Ks, the Tough Mudder, op- those obstacle course type things. Um, my son's gotten into cross country and I can keep up with him now and nice. just feeling better. And, getting a better mental space too, just being finding an outlet for, you know, exercise, a great outlet for stress. Mm -hmm. Mm, Yeah. 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 So what would you say, I guess, what, what motivated you in the first place to start getting in shape? Starting was always the hardest part. And, you know, you, it it always sucks in the beginning and (laughs) there's not a good way around that. So it's trying to figure out, you know, how to get yourself going. So I had a lot of start and stops. Uh, Many, many years ago, I got, kind of in a good place with when we were, uh, my wife and I got engaged. We we're like, all right, we're going to have a wedding. Let's both get in shape. We kind of got in shape for like six months and then wedding kid and all that and f- fell off a cliff. Mm-hmm. And then you just kept making excuses like, ah, I'm going to, you know, do it when I turn 30, I'm going to really make an effort. When I, or next year, I'm going to really make an effort. And something was always in the way. And I think it was like 2018, um, we were on vacation just took some pictures on the beach and I just looked at the picture and I said, I don't like that. Mm. And not getting any younger. It's not going to get any easier and sort of tried a few things um, like one-on-one sessions at the gym and trying to self-motivate. And it was really kind of hard to get over the hump. Um, And then a friend of mine came in and recommended coming in here. And I, the group class thing, I think was the thing that finally like worked mm-hmm. like you know to push yourself enough to get over that hump and once you get over the hump it's a lot easier to stay going because you you try to avoid that suck at the beginning <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah just just seeing myself just going all right we need we need to fix this now before we can't fix it got to make something happen yeah yeah okay so you were kind of in a situation where you you saw you saw where you were headed if yeah. you didn't make a change. Yeah, I don't like the direction I'm going. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was a very gradual thing, but it's it's the slippery slope of I I hate using weight as a barometer because it, it's not a good barometer, but it's at least a metric. And you just like you tell yourself, all right, I'm not going to let myself get past mm. two ten, and you get to two eleven, you're like, oh, it's fine, I'll get back down. Mm. And before you get back down, you get back to two eighteen, you're like, well, at least I'm going to stop before I get to two twenty. Mm-hmm. And then you bounce over that, and you're like, no, I'm going to get below, and then and that's kind of how it always looked is like, oh, I'll get back and you go the other way and you, then you keep lowering your bar instead of raising your bar in, in you know, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to go buy the next size shirts or something. And then uh-huh. happens, you go, I need it. And then you go buy it. And then, so you, you always had to have something to me- measure yourself with just in terms of where you're at. And it's that slippery slope and it just kept going that way. Mm-hmm. And you realize this is going to keep going. Yeah, if you don't stop it, it's just going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because individually, 
Uh, two eleven. Oh, it's not. That's not yeah, too it, bad. You know, like I said, I, I don't. I don't want to wait to make it sound like weight's the the metric. But it, yeah. if you're not exercising, then weight is a metric because your you, your ma- your mass shouldn't be changing. Yeah. Mm. So interesting. To that point, what metric do you use now? Because you have you've lost a lot of weight. Like you're you're in good shape now. Like you know, muscles are popping. You're you're running now. Like you are an active person now. So what metrics? Are you using now to gauge your progress? Um, measuring tape. Measuring tape. <laughs> okay. uh, but be, the, but it's going to start going bigger. <laughs> well, like uh, just like belt size and stuff like that. Oh, okay. It's okay. Be, where where you shouldn't be carrying a lot of extra. Those are places that I'll met. Like I'm not I'm not out there. You know, the measuring tape. It's more just like oh, I need to get new pants. Oh okay mm. okay. And then it's, it's more of a. I need, I need to get new pants as opposed to, uh, shoot, I need to get bigger pants. Mm. Um, and then uh, just how far can I run? How fast can I run? Mm. How much can I lift? Yeah. So just literal benchmarks of, all right, six months ago we did it. This in this time, can we do it faster and or longer? Mm-hmm. All right, I got ran six miles with the dogs and... They, I got tired before they got tired. Can I get, can I run longer than the dogs now? Or mm-hmm. Just oh. so, just literal, you know, get out and do it metrics. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, don't use this, don't use the scale, especially once you start exercising, because it's the scale will, the scale would be extremely demoralizing. Because my wife, we were joking when the first like three months I started here, I actually went up in weight. <laughs> <laughs> Just because yeah. you're you're exercising, you're gaining mass, bef- and you're like, wait, this is this is the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 a bad metric. But yeah, it, it doesn't tell the whole story. No, not at all. Yeah. So, at what point did you transition from using weight as you know the the main measurement of the main indicator of your success to using other measurements to kind of to motivate you at what point was it around the time you started is it relatively recently when did that start transition happen um i know so i always knew it was a bad metric um so really once we were at like doing classes every day you know, not every day um multiple classes a week i was just like all right i'm not going to worry about this metric i'm just going to you know look at it just out of curiosity like mm-hmm. where is it at but i wasn't going to judge myself by by it it was more I would like it to be a certain number just because, you know, it's still weight is still weight. And like you can be in fantastic shape, but if you're like 250 pounds, you're still putting a lot of weight on your knees. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you know, NFL running back, like you, it still matters. It's just not a good benchmark of are you in shape or not. Right. So I wasn't real. I was just looking at it peripherally like I would like this to go down, but I'm not really going to worry about it. Mm-hmm. So maybe a couple months in, you're like, eh, I'm going to stop using the scale. I was never really looking at it as a as a metric once I started. It oh, was okay. like I said, I was just looking at it as like I would eventually I know this will go down eventually. I would like it to go down to a certain number just for wear and tear reasons, but I yeah. I, I don't really care what the, I don't have a like I got to hit this number. It's whatever it is it is. I just yeah. ideally would like it to go to a certain number just for for wear and tear purposes. And if it means all right, well do you transition from like trying not to bulk up and do more things of like try to build lean mass instead of like bulk mass. That's another way to change it too. Mm -hmm. So, but no, I don't never really worried about it. I think that's the secret for a lot of people that they overlook that because they're like, Oh, I need to measure it. I need to measure it. And then that just becomes an obstacle to them. But for you, you just, because I've known for years that it was, it was wrong. But like I said, if you, if you don't have anything else to measure by, it's the easiest thing to look at. Yeah. Mm. So that's good. But you let yourself focus on getting better. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just going to get. The, yeah. The, the best thing to do is take out a measuring cape, tape before you start a plan. Measure yourself. Take a few pictures in the mirror and stash them away. And, and then forget about it. And then forget yeah. about <laughs> it. And then because you won't notice it. Yeah. Until you look at what what you were. Then you can see because you're looking at yourself in the mirror every day. Yeah. It lo- you look exactly the same to yourself, and you'll that can be demoralizing too because you you see you're like oh nothing's changed. But then you go compare yourself, you know, six months ago. You go, oh wait no, a lot has changed. Mm-hmm. But if you see it every day, you don't see it. Right. 
Yeah, I, I was looking up old videos of you bef- to get ready for this podcast, and I saw a video of you. I think I think you were a month or two in, and even just the way you move is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you were doing overhead presses and I think uh, step overs. Yeah. And it's just the energy level is so different now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is, that's a good point. That's definitely the thing that I've found the most is um, I don't get tired yeah. anymore. Like, you can get tired, but it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm dead and broken. It's just like, all right, I'm a little tired. Wait 10 minutes and uh, just keep going. Yeah. Not necessarily fast but can just keep going a lot more endurance a lot more stamina a lot more pep yep (laughs) yeah and for those people who are listening who maybe haven't seen your transformation again weight isn't a good indicator but just to give people an idea like do you mind sharing how much weight you've lost over the course of your your transformation um prior to coming in what the 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 photo of that i mentioned that Mm -hmm. i looked at i think i was at like 233 Mm -hmm. um had tried a few things and none of them ever really stuck and i had gotten down to like 220 when i came in here um and now i'm down to 192 Mm -hmm. that's awesome Uh, yeah and like i said the the better the better better measurement is like from a tight 38 to a looser 34 the belt yeah nice yeah or the pant size yeah there we go. I, yeah it's funny you're it's crazy how i don't remember when this was maybe it was like a couple months ago i think i was training in a class and you were working out and i remember you were doing like push-ups or something and i was like dang <laughs> he's kind of jacked <laughs> you know, like, like his veins are popping out i was like when did that happen oh my gosh <laughs> well the, yeah the beginning of the class couldn't do 10 push-ups and now it's all right just how many do you want just keep going yeah 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 Yeah, for sure for sure so uh you've kind of told us we've touched on it a little bit about what sort of things have worked for you on your fitness journey i know you said the group training and not necessarily focusing on the weight is there anything else that you feel like has has really worked for you on your fitness journey um like i said the group the group aspect is big because um, the last 20 minutes, that cardio session, that, that type of stuff, especially starting off is really hard to do by yourself. Mm. Um, just like, all right, you're going to go jump rope a hundred times. I'm like, well, I can't jump rope, <laughs> but everyone else is jump roping. So I guess I got to figure out how to jump rope. And when you're by yourself, you go, I can't jump rope. All right. I guess I'm just not going to do that. <laughs> like lifting li- the whole vanity weight thing like lifting heavy weights or trying to lift heavy weights is a little easier to motivate on yourself because you're just like i'm just gonna pick this up that stuff's fine but the putting it all together and pushing yourself past not discomfort not to discomfort but past comfort Mm -hmm. like things should be slightly uncomfortable it shouldn't be easy because you can motivate yourself to be easy but you can use others to motivate you to do something that's not easy. Mm-hmm. So, like, that that helps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think anyone who's ever worked out in a group or, or mm-hmm. just with another person, it just, you have more energy. You're just, yeah. just like, psychological. Like, oh, I, yes. don't, I want to keep up with the group. Like, I just need to keep up with the group. You know, yeah. so, and so you're able to push yourself. You'll more. do like 60% more <laughs> yeah. with well, someone it, else in the room. And the other thing is it, it also, when you're not doing it by yourself, you'll do things that you don't necessarily, I won't say don't want to do, but it's like, yeah. I hate pull-ups. Yeah. Wouldn't do pull-ups on my own because can't do them very well. Yeah. So I never would have done them. Mm. But when everyone's doing pull-ups, you're like, all right, I guess I got to do pull-ups today. Yeah. And, yeah, that's and then, true. And then you're like, all right, well, that wasn't so bad. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't do them on my own. Yeah. So you need to use, you use the motivation of others to actually get stuff done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And shifting yeah. gears here, like the flip side, what sort of things that have you tried in the past, not even just over the last you know, 18 months, just in your life, what sort of things have you tried that haven't worked for you on your um, fitness journey? So first thing we ever did, like I always tried to do just like rec stuff, volleyball and whatnot. And that was good in my early 20s of just keeping me from becoming completely just couch potato. <laughs> yeah. But that's not going to really fix anything. Um, 
we did P90X. Um, I'm sure everyone's probably done P90X at some point by now. Uh, that did good for a while, but it quickly got repetitive because unfortunately it's a video. Mm -hmm. So there's only, you know, you're doing the same thing every day or no, well, every six days. And eventually you get the point you're like, ah, I remember where he flubbed this word here. <laughs> and it's vi videos are really hard to do for a long period of time. And then as I was saying, like self-motivation was hard. Mm. So that's why that one fell off. Um, had gym memberships and couldn't get myself over the hump. So couldn't get to the point where I could go on my own. Um, personal trainer was okay at getting me to do some stuff. And this is like the one-on-one -on -one stuff, but that's, you're only meeting them once every two weeks and they'll give you like a plan, but then you're back on your own and you don't have anyone to like bounce things off of or to challenge yourself against. And again, just couldn't get over the hump. Mm -hmm. So really it was getting past that point of now it's like, now I want to go to the gym. And if I don't go to the gym for a week, it's like, I got to figure out something to do because I like where we're at and I want to keep where we're at because I don't want to go back to that. Mm. Um, so like I said, the, the committing to a, a multiple times a week, committing to a group because the group will hold you accountable. Not even like, they're not going to give you a hard time, but it's like, Hey, I hadn't, didn't see you. Where, you know, are, you? where <laughs> are you? Is everything all right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of like, Oh, I want to go be there and be part of a community that's doing something. Mm -hmm. And that seems to have worked real well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it definitely has. And you add so much to the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much. And whenever we have to like do any kind of math problem in class, we're like, Nate, what is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me go grab my cat. Uh, hey, Nate, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Yeah. All right. So um, as far as your mindset, how has that changed have you, as you've progressed? There's a lot less um, worrying about things being difficult in the beginning. And it's mm -hmm. like, I've done things that I didn't think I was going to get to. I didn't think I was going to run 10K. Ah. And I was like, oh, I did it. And that wasn't so bad. Didn't think I would, you know, be able to, you know, deadlift body weight type stuff. And I was like, oh, I did it. that wasn't so bad. So there's a lot less worrying about I can't and more just if I can't, then I will. Like, because figured out that if you just work at it, eventually can't becomes will. So it's, it's like not, it's not, can't I can't yet. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Can't yet. Yeah. So I remember uh, we did some mud races together. Your first one, there was this big wall at the end. We had to climb up the rope. You didn't quite make it up <laughs> the first time. And then this last time we did uh, a couple Saturdays ago, we just flew right up there. Yep. <laughs> So you eventually, it became easy. Yep. And the walls that you couldn't get over, you do it again, and this time you get over them. And yeah. Sawtooth is still not happening, but everything <laughs> else is. But now Sawtooth is, that's the next right. check mark. We would be bored if there wasn't some obstacle that was, like, elusive. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have some Mount Everest in your life. Like, someday I'm going to get there. Yeah. But that's another good, good point of, like, all right, so we did one obstacle course the first year. This year we did two. And now next year I'm like, it's it just all of those just builds. I'm like, all right, I got to do, I want to do some with my family and I want to do some over here. And I'm trying to figure out how to do more of these things because I f you finally feel good and you want to keep this. Yeah, and it's like a measuring thing. We were yeah. talking about how to measure your progress. These These challenges, these races and these courses give you a way to gauge how you're doing. Right. Yeah. Like, oh, this thing was easier. That thing is easier now. Yeah, and it's really interesting what you keep saying about how um, you're you don't want to go back. And yeah. I think that's something that a lot of people who struggle with getting in shape don't understand. Not because they're not capable, because but because maybe they've been you know out of shape for so long they don't know how their body is supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. They don't know the kind of energy they're supposed to have. They don't know what their body is capable of. And if they don't know, hey, like, I'm not I'm not supposed to be tired every day, right? Like, I'm not supposed to get winded walking up the stairs, right? I'm not yeah. supposed to be tired playing with my kid. They don't, they think it's just normal. And because they've never experienced what it's like to not feel that way, there, is, there isn't that same uh, light switch moment that you have where it's like, oh, I'm not going back there. But 
if they could just persevere the way you did and the way you know you're talking about it like they you can get there i mean anyone can get to that point you just have to keep going well i remember the first like first couple classes and it's like all right row 200 meters and 150 meters in and i got a stitch in my side or <laughs> do 50 jump ropes do 50 jump ropes and you're like i you gotta give me a minute if i keep going i'm gonna like <laughs> <laughs> Ralph and like I said, I just like I got a cramp here, yeah. and it's like I know that this will go away, but I it's really hard to work through that in the beginning. Mm-hmm. It you just have to really just commit to like this is not going to be easy, but it will get easier. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Well, to that to that point, well, okay. So so being able to persevere. What other recommendations do you have for someone who is really struggling to find that motivation and stay consistent? You know, because you were there at one point. What recommendations do you have for someone who was who is in the shoes that you once were? Uh, that's it's it's, it's kind of tough because probably everyone has their own thing. Um, uh, so like most of my family has is was really big into some sort of sport, either like my sisters played softball, my brother ran the Boston Marathon. So I was always seeing people who were doing stuff. And I was I was just talking to my brother about stuff and like he wanted to go running. And I was like, I want to do a 5K at some point. I, I can't run a mile right now. So I'm just going to suck for a while. And eventually, I you know, that's a benchmark that mm. I'm going to hit. And I was just came to the conclusion that if I didn't do it soon, it was probably never going to happen. Hmm. Um, and then the other one was, like I said, my son, who has, I don't know where he got it, has unlimited energy. <laughs> and I didn't want to be like, I wanted to be able to do whatever he wanted to do. If he wanted to go, you know, go for a run or go bike, whatever, or go hiking, I didn't want to not be able to keep up with him. So I said, all right, or that's a motivation. I, I need to keep up with him because mm. if I don't, I'm going to miss all these the, the, the things that he wants to do. And he was getting really into running, and I was like, "All right, I got to get into the point where I can at least keep up with him." And it's, I keep saying running, and it was funny because running was never my goal coming in here. Is just to get in shape, and then yeah, this then, has just come up in the past few months. This and then it was just kind of like, yeah. "All right, well, now we can do this." And now I was like, "Oh, well, this is another one that." this used to suck it sucks less and now i'm like you like oh i run and i'm not lying on the floor dead afterwards and, <laughs> but and that didn't kill me no and i was like ah, that, that, that wasn't so bad and then you go oh wait i finally experienced what like oh runners high and all that it's like oh i actually feel happy afterwards and i don't know why but this is kind of cool let's mm-hmm. keep doing that that's cool that's cool so what you're saying is is you're recommending people find their deeper reason yeah. for doing things and then find a reasonable short-term goal like like a 5k or something 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 yeah, yeah something to do um and you know a reasonable reason for doing it can just be like um so again family stuff um I mentioned a bunch of my siblings and stuff have are all very athletic, but you go one generation back and we're not. And we have a lot of, you know, heart disease and high blood pressure mm. and particularly um, diabetes. And I was like, all right, I don't want that. Yeah. Well, what's the biggest way to, to avoid all that stuff is don't carry a lot of excess. Try to get yourself in shape and you can kind of avoid a lot of those things. Yeah. So that was that was always Underneath the hood of everything, the number one goal was find some way to get in shape to try to avoid later in life health problems. And hopefully, you, know, you can only do what you can do, but yeah. that's the number one thing is you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, you probably should carry a little <laughs> less. Um, yeah. So just invest in your health and then yeah. Yeah, find something that you want to do. Just there's plenty of, like, it doesn't even have to be a 5K. There's, like, yeah. if you can't run at all, there's little 1K races all over the place, or yeah. well, one-mile races, and just, you know, find a group, do a fun run, and yeah. do something like that, or just go, like, oh, I have to pick up these boxes every day, and these are terrible. Let's get to the point where these aren't terrible, and you yeah. little increment. Don't try to do the big goal at once. Yeah. Don't do, go from zero to, I'm going to run a marathon. That won't work. 
Yeah. So small incremental goals yeah. is definitely and a, a, a good. A point for people out there that, that have never done a sport, uh, um, you were not an athlete in high school, right? I just golfed, so no. <laughs> yeah, not an athlete in high school. So, you know, late, late bloomers out there, you know, you don't have to be have a history of athleticism to start a fitness journey. Mm -mm. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. So, go, so in terms of goals, we we're just talking about goals. What goal are you working towards now? Um, so the goal, current goal is um, we're doing a, trying to do a half marathon in November, and then – I then I don't know what the goal is because I don't think I want to do a full marathon just because I've just heard like the horror stories of like, it was great, but my toenails fell off. And oh, it's like, oops, ah. I think that was me. Like, uh, it's not just that. I've heard it from many people and they're like, ah, I don't know if I want to get there yet. But the nice thing about that running as a goal is that one, you have a really long um, shelf life on that one. You can, you can slowly work that one. It's not like uh, yeah. the like... Oh, you know, I'm going to play in the U.S. Open in tennis. Well, if you're 35, you probably missed the window on that one. <laughs> yeah. You, um, there's people in their 80s running marathons. Yeah. So, so half marathons, the current goal. Um, and then it's just like, yeah, the obstacle course races. Just do more of the obstacles. And, yeah. um, you know, benchmark week. Yeah. Look at the wall, see what you picked up last benchmark, and yeah. see if you can pick up something a little bit heavier. Yeah. Mm. Can you yeah. do something but, a little bit faster? But uh, yeah, half marathon we're working on. So yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Just keep you just push, keep pushing yourself. Keep seeing. Okay, what's okay? I've done this. Mm -hmm. Now what's next? And all the goals that you're setting are not way Do, above your every, pay grade, no, so to speak. Every, you know? Everything's been it, everything's incremental. It was yeah. yeah. The first goal was a 5K. Just yeah. can I run 3.1 miles without stopping? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how slow you go. All right, check that one off. Yeah. Then it's, can I do a, a sub 30? Ah. Hit that one. Can I do a 10K without stopping? Mm -hmm. All right, hit that one. And now it's, can I do half marathon? Cool. And so it's, they're all incremental. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Cool, man. Amazing. Well, last question we got for you today. So what are three things that elevate your life? And it doesn't have to be fitness yeah, related. Yeah, it doesn't have to be fitness. Anything. Three things in your life. Um, like I said, family, seeing my son you know, out there doing stuff is, you know, that's always number one. Um, I would, uh, you know, f fitness is up there. It doesn't have to be number one, but it's it like challenging myself to do stuff, events, and it, like you do get a nice sense of pride of like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, I don't know, um, you know, Family fitness. Fixing the house. Fixing the house. Yes. Yeah. Three Fs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Family fitness fixing the house. Just something, <laughs> like, you know, being able to go like, I, I, I fixed that or I built that. Mm -hmm. like, something, it, something you can take pride in. Is it easier to fix things now that you're in a different... Oh, good question. <laughs> uh, it's easier to carry dirt around the yard. Oh, <laughs> cool. Cool, man. Cool. Very cool. Well, we appreciate you coming on, Nate. Uh, any, you got any last words for anyone out there? Yeah. Can we sign off. Just, uh, just keep at it. Yeah. It, it, everything it. gets easier. Everything gets easier. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect, man. Well, we appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We will talk to you next time. All right. Bye-bye.